In this video, I'm going to talk about competent advisor status, CAS, the thing that all mortgage brokers, mortgage advisors, and newbies to the industry want to gain. But does it really actually help you, and does it really mean that much? So if you've never, if you're new to the industry, then this is going to give you a lot of value in the sense of giving you an understanding of what competent advisor status actually is and what it actually means for you in the mortgage world and doing business. Because when you become self-employed or when you make the decision, should I say, that you want to join the mortgage industry and you want to become a mortgage advisor, you go out and you gain your CMAP qualifications, your CII qualifications so that you can have a certificate in mortgage advice and practice. And that gives you the qualification to give advice. CMAP 1 actually enables you to give advice under supervision. Uh, and then CMAP 2 and 3 is very much product knowledge and how you apply that product knowledge, where CMAP 1 is all the regulations. But the difficulty is CMAP is still the same qualification that I did in 2003. And it teaches you absolutely nothing, zero, about doing the job on a day-to-day -day basis. And therein lies the problem. The job is practical application, where the examination is outdated, has loads of information in it that is completely unrelevant to today's mortgage world. And even the scenarios and the case studies aren't reflective of the advice that we give today. Because when I was doing mortgages pre-credit crunch in 2003 till 2008, 2009, it was a lot, lot easier. You, you know, below 75% of the property's value, you barely needed any documentation or any detail. You had self-certified mortgages where people could sign on a piece of paper and they could gain a mortgage as easy as anything and banks were throwing money at people. And then we got hit by the credit crunch and the issues that happened in America uh, and with you know the, the lending side of things. And there's a great film on Netflix that I can't remember the name of that takes you through. I think it's The Big Short, actually. And it just talks you through what actually happened and how it all came about. And it was partly irresponsible lending, uh, but also when that happened, the credit crunch hit the economy. All of a sudden, the banks started to tighten their criteria. They made it harder for you to be able to go and get money. So when joining the industry again as a mortgage broker back in 2016, you know, I built a life insurance brokerage from 2009 till 2015, did a few mortgages during that time. But then I found my opportunity to get back to mortgages in 2016. And, you know, in five years, we've gone from a team of uh, three to a team of 13. We're approaching seven figures a year. I haven't given advice in uh, at least 18 months. I focus on strategy, brand, business, direction, uh, and my operations manager focuses on our team and monitoring them on a day-to-day -day basis. I provide the inspiration, the education, the support, the guidance, the motivation, and Andrew deals with the day-to-day. -day. And the one thing I can say, getting back to mortgages in 2016, the whole landscape has completely changed. The level of detail that you now need to go into, the level of assessment that you need to understand, the world of um, pay slips, bank statements, everything in your life, including the kitchen sink, is needed to assess whether you are financially viable to gain a mortgage. And there are firms out there who will give you competent advisor status in the process of a week, which I don't think is acceptable. And I think it is irresponsible to do that. Because the whole point of competent advisor status is being able to say that you are competent. Now, do you think that an aircraft pilot is given competency after going on one solo flight, two solo flights, three solo flights? Of course they're not. 
Now I know that's an extreme example because they have people's lives in their hand. But in a world where you're giving mortgage advice, you're giving financial, a degree of financial advice, you're talking to people about responsibility of being able to maintain a significant debt for a number of years and making sure that their circumstances in the future are not gonna change, as well as making sure that your customer and your client has the relevant life insurance, critical illness, income protection, health insurance, home insurance, and also the most suitable product to suit them, their circumstances, their income, their future, their family, and everything. If you think that you can be given competent advisor status in one to three cases, having had no prior experience, then you're naive. And I think the company who gives that is irresponsible. Because competent advisor status is about your ability to do the job on your own to the standards that are required under the Financial Conduct Authority. And that is not something that is learned overnight. You can have a residential mortgage, a buy to let mortgage, a let to buy where somebody rents out their existing home to buy a new one. You can have a single person, a family, a couple. You can do HMO, you can do commercial conversions, you can do um, employed, self-employed, bonuses, commissions, overtime, credit reports, CCJs, defaults. All of these are different pieces of the puzzle. And until you have faced absolutely everything in a circumstance, how can you possibly be competent? And the biggest issue that I find and that I see and that I hear from my mentees and that I see within the uh, Facebook groups that I have for the industry is the lack of support, the lack of guidance, the lack of training, the fact that there are sweatshops out there that will literally take one person from one particular job, stick them through a five day training course, make them do a couple of role plays, make them do a couple of case studies and say, here you go, go and be a mortgage advisor, give clients advice, look after their finances and you are now competent to do it on your own. Absolutely ludicrous. If you're an advisor and you work underneath my brokerage and you have had no prior experience and I have taken on one person during, uh, in October of 2018, uh, who left me in October of 2019 to follow the shiny penny of a higher commission amount, bearing in mind that from a dead start with no prior experience, in his first year of trading, I got him to write 145,000 pounds worth of business. I trained him on mortgages, life insurance, critical illness, income protection, gave him full competency of the job. He never did any lead generation in 12 months and he left to go and follow 80% or 85% commission with no leads. It's not about the percentage that you get because at the end of the day, 80 or 85% of zero is zero. And it is bloody hard to write a decent living in this job. Would you rather be able to write 145,000 and all you have to do is focus on your clients and get 70 grand a year? Or would you rather have to really fight and struggle for business, go and potentially write 70 grand a year, but you're only realistically gonna get 54,000? You need to look at the overall package of the company that you are working with. Training, support, guidance, help, um, um, coaching, mentoring. And that's not a dig at the person who left me. He is perfectly fine to go and follow his own path. He has to make the decisions for his own life. And that was his decision. I feel it was naivety with the knowing the industry, having been in this for so long. Uh, you know, majority of advisors that I have now, uh, 12 years Barclays, 14 years Halifax, 20 years within the industry. Um, another one, 15 years within the industry. You know, I've got some really experienced people on my team because they understand what it actually means to be in the industry in today's world. And of course, compliance and TNC and training and competence is everything that you should expect from the firm that you work with. So to give you a journey of the trainee that I took in on October 2018, and something that you should be thinking about within the firm that you are in. He was based within my office, had daily contact, and initially, when he first started, for three months, 
from October through till December. All he did was work on existing clients. Clients who of mine that I had dealt with that were focusing on product transfers or potentially remortgages, which enabled me and freed me up time to focus on new leads and new clients. But in doing that, it enabled him to get an understanding of speaking to people because he'd never done it before. Uh, it gave him an opportunity to understand systems, speaking to lenders, our internal CRM system, uh, how to manage a diary, how to write an email, understand the end-to-end -end process, because some of them were product transfers, which you'll know are nice and easy to do and can often be done on a uh, non, uh, what's the word, a non, or an execution only kind of non-advice basis, where on the other side of the coin, you've got a remortgage where you're transferring to a different lender and you have to do the full fact find, affordability, criteria, assessment, everything and make a recommendation. So that was for three months only. And during that time, probably did on average two mortgages a week. Um, so by, over the course of 12 weeks, I've done roughly 24 mortgages. And during that time, had a good understanding of the process. Now also during that time, he was not doing protection. I was doing all the protection sales because it's very hard to try and learn two things at once. So I was dealing with majority of the protection sales. And I think probably during that time, there were some really simple vanilla mortgages that I had attracted, clients that I had spoken to, and I passed them over to him to deal with after I had done the initial call. Now then we started in January, I said, okay, you know, the, the goal, and I set three month goals. So within the first quarter of um, January, the goal was that he would start working on some new leads which then leveraged me even more because I was able to do more strategy calls as I like to call them. For some of you, you might look at it as a first appointment. So I was able to do some of those first calls. Hi, Mr. Client, how are you doing? Yep, bum, 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 this is how we work. This is what we're gonna do. This is the fee we're gonna charge. This is the documentation we need. Can you get it all done? Yes, confident we can help you. Here you go. Uh, I'll give you a call in two days. Give him a call in two days. Yep, are oh, you happy with everything? Brilliant. What I'm now gonna do is pass you over to Joe Bloggs Boker. He's now gonna get your documentation in and he's gonna be in the driving seat from this point onwards. And I would then coach and mentor him through those new cases, purchases, buy to lets, property investment strategies, whatever it might well have been. Uh, which then leveraged my time even more because the research is the bit that takes the longest. The understanding of the end-to-end -end process, understanding limited company accounts, sole traders, which lenders are going to include bonus, overtime, commissions. You know, a lot of our clients are self-employed, but a lot of our self-employed clients have employed partners in police, in NHS, in normal office-orientated kind of jobs, part-time, mums, etc., so on and so forth. Fathers as well, because we have some dominant ladies running big businesses as well and house husbands along the side. So I'm all about equality. Um, so that was three months. And by the end of that point, he had now seen probably the existing clients that he was also doing on remortgage as well as probably one case a week that he was working on that was new. So by this point in time, not only had he had done maybe, let's, let's say between 15 and 20 cases up until December 2018, uh, but also during January to um, March, he had now done the same kind of 15 to 20 product transfers and remortgages, but had now also done maybe another 12 or 15 cases for new clients. And I'm a big believer, and we do this with our new trainee advisors, of which we have two at the moment, uh, of actually only giving them one lead a day. Because any more than that gets you, over, gets you too swamped. Because you speak to a lead today, and three months later, they're going to be coming back. And it's got to be a steady, slow increase rather than going in and doing two or three strategy calls or new leads every single day because that will see you stuck and see you screwed. So by that time, by the end of March, April, I'd had another couple of advisors actually join active in, in that time in 2019. He was then able to do some new leads. And that was effectively six months managing new leads, dealing with those clients. And during that six months from March until June, I actually trained him on all things protection. How to give advice, how to structure it. And bearing in mind, I sold, I ran an insurance brokerage doing nearly a million pound a year uh, with a team of 13 from 2009 till 2015, spending 20 grand a month on leads. I know how to sell protection. It was all over the phone. So I trained him on how to position it, how to sell it, how to be effective at it. And that's really where his sales went through the roof. Because you imagine, for the first six months of his job, he was dealing with remortgages, product transfers, and... 
um, some new leads. But then the second six months was where he was really starting to focus on protection. And that's what saw a massive up curve in his ability and in his skills. So then I started to train him on all things protection, as well as giving him the opportunity to deal with a lot of new leads. Now, needless to say, I did not grant him cast status, deem him competent until almost 11 months. And I realize now that's what he had been waiting for because that enabled him to obviously move on. But the number of cases that he had then been through, product transfers, remortgages, self-employed, employed, buy to let, let to buy, a um, couple of HMOs I think as well, one, one or two maybe holiday lots or service accommodation, he was competent. He was able to do the job unsupervised, have less file checks, and we checked every single file because you have to. And when you join a new network, they, you know, when I went to a network for six months, I had eight file checks. And that's, uh, I set up a separate business just to give you context in June of 2018. I did it for six months uh, because I wanted to test being an AR, whether it would suit me because I've been DA since 2009, directly authorized with the Financial Conduct Authority. I set up a separate business underneath the network as an appointed representative, trial giving advice underneath the network, found that I actually preferred DA life because of the more control and uh, ability that I have to say on my own ship. I'm also from a Woolwich, Connells, Alexander Hall, sales compliance manager, building a firm for somebody else for 12 months in 2005. I know the industry and I know the rules. And I realized in doing that, that actually nothing has changed, which again goes to show you from a regulatory point of view, the way in which I did the job in 2003, I took seven years out until 2015, got back to mortgages in 2016, I even tested being an appointed representative in 2018, and bar a few minor little tweaks in process, everything's the same. And this goes to show how much that the exams are irrelevant to your ability to do the job. It's competency, it's knowledge, it's understanding. And this is where, I'll be completely frank with you, I am not one of the best mortgage advisors in the sense that my brain does not retain the information around which lender and which interest rate is the best. So research takes me an exceptionally long period of time. I, have, I had spreadsheets, I had uh, search functions, I had, uh, you've got Criteria Hub and Knowledge Bank as tools that you can use now. But that part of the job, which is the biggest part of the job, took me the longest. So as a, I am great with clients, I'm good at rapport, I'm great at selling protection, I can present the right solution, I understand all the different property strategies from a higher level. But in terms of what I believe the core part of the job now is retention of information around lender and around the criteria. I know the loan to values, I know the percentages, I know the rough interest rates, but I couldn't tell you who, which, where or how or what. Whereas that's why I have a team and that's why I focus on the areas that I focus on because I know my superpowers. In my insurance brokerage, I had one advisor who was like Stato, if you ever used to watch um, Soccer AM. I could literally chuck at him and say, right, I've got one client on the phone. He's 23 stone, he's five foot 11, he's got high blood pressure, diabetes, taking a statin, doing this, doing that, and, it, and this guy would go, boom, call these two insurers. And that is the ability to save time to be the best possible broker you can possibly be. That is how you actually can be super efficient and can save a valuable amount of time in your advice. And where you've got the retention of information or you've got the ability to be able to research and source 10 times quicker, that's where the gold is. Truly, it really, really is. You know, it's that's the behind the scenes that the client doesn't see that is actually the hardest bit and hardest piece of the puzzle. The bit that the advisors don't talk enough about and a bit that the advisors don't actually have a bigger inclination. I can take any self-employed person and get them to be an absolutely A-star student, shall we say, in buying their dream home. Uh, I understand accounts, I understand how to present the business, which is probably one of the toughest elements is actually presenting it to an underwriter that makes logical sense. I understand business. That's where my specialism in self-employed really excels uh, because I can paint a picture that makes logical sense to an, to an underwriter.
Um, so sorry, I'm digressing. So in terms of your competent advisor status, don't underestimate how long it should take you to become competent. Everyone chases this piece of paper that says you're a competent advisor. I was a competent advisor before I joined and set up my separate business under an AR. Within eight file checks, they deemed me a competent advisor because effectively, I was able to tick the boxes of have I done, have I got a fact find? Does the objectives of the fact find meet the illustration that's being presented? Does the illustration match the AIP, the agreement in principle, decision in principle that's been submitted? Does the decision in principle meet the app, uh, match the application that's been submitted to the lender? Does the suitability letter, demands and needs for insurance, match the application that's been submitted to the lender? And does it match the objectives of what the client set out to achieve at the beginning? And does the advice make logical sense to the, cli sense to the client and their personal circumstances and situation? Um, and that is what they are looking for. If then, after you've done your suitability letter, which should be done within five days of the mortgage application being submitted, if then at that stage, uh, you make a change, the property gets downvalued, the mortgage amount, they come back with a lesser amount because something pops up on the credit score that they're not happy with. Maybe they're not happy with something in the accounts, the pay slips, the bank statements, whatever it might well be, and they reduce the loan amount. You should then do an additional addendum letter to re-quantify why they've gone with the level that they've gone with. Same as if they increase the amount because they change the property. Your advice has to match, and you have to tell a story from the first conversation you have with the client to the point where they get their mortgage offer, and the journey must match. And if it changes along the way, then you need to have additional documentation that backs up everything in terms of why the change has happened. And that is where I am particularly good, is documenting down that story. So I hope that gives you some context around competent advisor status. I would love to know what your experience has been in obtaining competent advisor status, how this video has changed your perception of getting competent advisor status, whether you have experienced having been new to the industry and getting two, three, four file checks and being deemed competent and shoved out on your merry way. Because I can tell you one of my newest advisors who was with an appointed representative company prior to joining Active, uh, hadn't been given competent advisor status but had been doing the job for a few months, but didn't have an understanding of how to, re how to do research, how to source, how to key an AIP, how to key an application. Surely this stuff is competency in doing the job. In the same way that knowing how to read what height you are at in an aeroplane when flying the plane, how to talk to passengers, how to uh, understand how to land. You know, again, it's the extreme example, but it's people's finances, it's your customers' livelihoods. You need to be able to sit there and go, I can breeze through the ability of doing this job. And you're looking for this shiny piece of paper that says you are competent. But in your own mind, do you feel competent or not? Because that's the real true test of time or real true test of your skill and your ability. Someone else can say that you're competent, but if you don't feel it, and if you aren't able to present to your clients with conviction, then how can you possibly deem yourself competent? The whole element of being pro. Perseverance leads to results which creates opportunity. Perseverance to understand different scenarios and different case studies. Perseverance to learn and improve and develop and grow. Perseverance to know the insides and outs of mortgage lenders. In my sense, it's a completely different element of perseverance. To help and support and guide you to understand the true reality of the mortgage industry and what you are about to embark on. And that, when you become a pro, gets you the results, which leads to more opportunities with your clients, leads to more opportunities in the businesses that you're working with. And if you don't have the right coach, the right mentor, the right guidance, the right support, the right hand-holding within your business, daily conversation, daily communication, daily support for at least 12 months when you're new to industry, 
or at least three months when you're new to a new firm. I don't care if you've been doing the job for six years. If you join Active, you have got daily support for three to six months until we deem you as competent. Because although you are competent with the firm that you used to work with, I can't trust that you were doing it to the standard that I would expect within this industry. I can't trust their decision. So therefore, if you join Active, we will deem you as competent based on the advice that you have given to clients. Role plays in today's world are utter BS. They are rubbish, they are fake, they don't tell you anything. But being able to check, and this is what we do, being able to check the recommendation prior to it being given to a client. So documentation in, fact find completed, research being done, quote and research produced. We do a check before that is sent to the client. Then a check prior to the application being submitted to the lender to make sure that nothing has changed from submission through till from first conversation to ensure that story still matches. We then do a check prior to the suitability letter being sent to the client to make sure that that is spot on and there's no changes and it's logical and it's understood. And then our external compliance firm does a check after the offer has been produced to ensure that everything is spot on. That is true competence. That is the ability to be pro. That is the ability to be active. Uh, So I hope this inspires you. I would love to know your thoughts and feelings around this. Leave comments below, rate, review, subscribe, whatever it is you choose to do. Um, Make sure that you keep talking to me. If you need help, support and guidance, then I would love to help you. I really want to improve the education within this industry. I think it's a fantastic industry to be part of. I think there are some amazing firms out there that do brilliantly when it comes to training advisors, but I think equally there are some ones that do absolutely horrendous. And I know this because of my mentees. I know that support is one thing that is massively lacking within the financial services industry. And that's even from networks. And that is why, that's why my brokerage does its thing. That's why Pro is always gonna remain completely independent. It's gonna be that Um, It's gonna be independent of any network, of any business, of any company, but it's gonna be taking the best from the industry and creating a new standard that I think people should want to behold to. And you can be a true leader from a marketing perspective, from an advice perspective, from a business perspective, and from a family perspective, creating more leads, sales, profit, and time to do more of what you love with who you love. That is the ethos. So I hope you have a fantastic day. I hope this inspires you. Thank you for tuning in. And remember, now is the time to become pro.